Hi, I'm Mike, and today, let's cake the cows on our Wyoming life. When it comes to feeding the cows, there's a lot more to it than just letting the cows graze all summer or feeding them bales of hay in the winter. A majority of the feed consumed by cows is in the form of forage, that grass or hay, but a huge and even more important part of their nutrition is what is called supplemental feed. Supplements provide cattle with extra minerals, vitamins, and other compounds they may require and can't get from forage. Here on the ranch, we feed two main types of supplements. The first is called block feed. It includes salt blocks or mineral blocks or even loose mineral, which the cows lick to get the effect. The other is a pelletized cattle feed that has all the ingredients milled and formed into pellets. These pellets are called cake. Caking is something that we do here on the ranch every few days. I monitor the cattle, mostly by examining their poop. Yeah, it's gross. But doing so, you can tell how much protein, fat, and fiber a cow is getting from their natural forage. Also, you can look at the cow and vary the nutritional requirements by grading the body score of a majority of the cows. Cows are ranked by something that's called the body condition score, which ranks them on a scale from one to nine. One through th three are thin animals, four through six are moderate, and seven through nine are fat animals. Based on the time of the year and what cows are doing, you can let their body score change. A cow that's getting ready to give birth needs to have a higher body condition score in order to facilitate the production of milk. While on the other side of the coin, a cow that's weaning off its calf doesn't need to have a high score and can be allowed to lose some weight. We aim to keep the cows in that moderate range and let them fluctuate a few of those points. Based on their manure and their body score, you can tell what kind of and how much supplement to give the cows. Today we're feeding cake. We're gonna feed a 20% protein cake, which will give them an influx of protein that the grass is now lacking as it dries up. Before we get to doing that, we need cake. We're out of cake. So we're gonna to head to town to the feed store and pick some up. A quick drive to town takes us to the feed store where we're gonna buy a ton of 20% rangeland bagged cake. Each bag weighs 50 pounds and the entire ton contains 40 bags, all stacked and wrapped and loaded on the pickup by a forklift. Once we get it back to the ranch, I use the Bobcat with the forks attachments to unload it from the truck and place it in the sales barn where it will be out of the weather as we feed it. When it comes to feeding cake, it's not an exact science. The general rule is that we wanna feed anywhere from two to four pounds per cow. We can't stand there and make sure every cow gets its allotted two pounds. And some cows who are giant pigs will get more. But because we feed cake every few days, we hope that the cows that didn't get as much today will make up for it next time we feed. Using the gator, I back up to the ton of cake and load up 300 pounds of cake to feed today stacking it in the back of the gator. Then it's a matter of driving to the cows. Feeding cake by hand is probably one of the most dangerous jobs on the ranch. A majority of cow related accidents take place as you are hand feeding the cows. Grabbing a sack of cake off the back of the gator and walking it out to the cows puts you in close proximity to a very hungry and pushy cow. And if you don't know how to look out or how to move around cattle, it can get you in a very bad situation. The cows, of course, are not trying to hurt anybody. And they know as soon as we enter their pasture that cake is coming. I'm not sure what they put in cake that makes it so appealing to cattle, but whatever it is, it's very addictive. I've seen cows fight, push, and kick just to get to the cake. I've had cows that will follow me for miles just by shaking an empty bag. And my only hope is 
that if a cow wants to get the cake monkey off her back, there's a good rehab program because this stuff is addictive to cows. Because we're being chased by cows and I want to start laying out the cake before we're swarmed, we stop and get to work. Working quickly and smartly, we get the cake off the gator, rip open a bag and lay it out, trying to spread it out as far as possible. The goal is to get the cows away from the gator and eating the cake, therefore leaving us alone. I say that's the goal, but it's rarely one that I achieve. More cows arrive, and cows that didn't get in on the initial sack keep following me around. And some don't even go for the cake I've laid out because, as every cow knows, the next sack is going to be better, and the one after that is going to be the best yet. So why go after the first sack when a better one is coming up? Whoa, did you catch that? A kick from a cow is a big scary thing. These cows all weigh around 1,500 pounds. The bulls are still in here, and some of them weigh over 2,000 pounds. A cow usually kicks because you're in her space. And this is where knowing your cows really helps. Number 37 is a cranky cow. She's a good mom and a good cow, as long as you don't get in her space. If you do, she's gonna kick at you. Working with cows is kind of like driving a car. You have to drive defensively because you never know what the other driver is thinking or doing. I never know what a cow is thinking and I'm not even sure they know what they're doing. So I'm always looking around, my head on a swivel, keeping an eye out for trouble and keeping an escape route open. When you see 37 coming up on you, you know she's gonna act all twitchy. So start backing up. The more cake we get laid out, the more cows disperse to eat and leave me alone. Except for this white cow here. He's our lead steer and he was raised to help me move the cows from pasture to pasture. Although he is helpful, he's a giant pain. He's definitely one of those cows that think I have something better coming up. But soon even he decides that each bag contains the same food and he gets to eating before he misses out completely. With all the sacks of cake fed, we're done caking for the day, and it's time to make our escape and head back to the shop. Every cow wants more, but actually too much cake can kill a cow. A few years ago, we had a cow get a hold of a whole bag all to herself, and she ate it until she almost burst. So even though they're not happy about it, they're gonna have to wait until next time. And no matter how much they cry, I'm not gonna give in. Caking the cows can be a little nerve-wracking. They each weigh more than a grand piano, and they don't really care if you're in their way. I'd be lying if I said my heart doesn't start beating a little bit faster when you turn around and 100 cows are bearing down at you at 20 miles an hour. I tend to work a little bit faster, and you picture that grand piano crashing right into you. In fact, a grand piano might have better brakes than a cow, especially a hungry cow. So, what is it about cake that makes cows go crazy? Is it like candy or is it like crack? Let's find out. I know this is a bad idea. Oh God, I can't even bite into it. Ah. Oh, that's disgusting. <laughs> oh, that's gross. Crack is whack. Ah, that's horrible. Thanks for coming along with me today as we tackled one of the most dangerous jobs on the ranch. Lots more dangers on the way though. Coming up, we'll be preg checking the heifers and actually using ultrasound to check and see if they're pregnant. And sometimes we can tell, well, most of the time we can tell if they have twins and sometimes we can even tell the sex of the calf. Also on the way, we'll be sorting bulls off from the cows and bringing them home ending the summer sexual revolution. And I'm not sure who's gonna be more relieved, the bulls or the cows. Thanks for subscribing. And if you haven't done so, or this is your first time here, we invite you to subscribe and click that little bell so you don't miss a thing. Comment, like, and share. Help us share our life with the world and show where your food really comes from. Have a great week. And thanks for joining us in our Wyoming life. <laughs>